live from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, and on Mars, I want to present to you the team that has brought us back to Mars tonight. So, uh, about an hour and a half ago, I went outside and looked toward the west, and I saw Mars there, and I said, in an hour and a half, you are going to have a visitor. And the planet smiled, and I knew that we were going to have good luck. I'm sure all of you want to hear about how things went. Well, tonight was, was a great drama that was played. I felt like an adventure movie, but in reality, I kept telling myself, this is real. This is real, what's happening, and what a fantastic demonstration. And, and just think, what an inspiration to the young people in the world. It's really inspiring. This is how inspirational. And what a bargain that we got this mission for. This movie costed you less than seven bucks per American citizen. This, this movie, movie costed you less than seven, seven bucks, bucks per American, American citizen. citizen. And look at the excitement that we have brought and the inspiration that we have brought. So that rocked. Seriously, did, was that not cool or what? <laughs> Woo! Woo! So that rocked. Seriously, did, was that not cool or what? <laughs> Woo! Woo! And then here, uh, Dr. Stelsner has is, is been the, the, the father and the mother and everything in between of, of the landing system we've, we've built. So. <laughs> Say something profound. <laughs> I am terribly humbled by this experience. I forever, secretly, have felt that I do not deserve to be in the position of leading the team that I lead because they are certainly in some and largely by count of individual, more capable than I. Soup to nuts, soup, soup to, to nuts. nuts. And I, I think that this nation is a truly great representation of a, of a corner or a piece of humanity that reaches out and explores and conquers and engineers. We are kind of tool makers, uh, agriculturalists, pioneers, and, and that's reflected in the activities and actions and results of tonight. So I want to say thank you to the blue shirts. <laughs> uh, certainly this beautiful theater of tonight, the drama of us all being able to experience it together, this, this beautiful, beautiful theater, theater of tonight, tonight, the drama, drama of us, us all being able, able to experience, experience it together, together, unrivaled in the experience for all of us. And with that, really, I have nothing more to say. That picture says it all for me. I think that is the best picture of Mars I've ever seen. The money, two and a half billion dollars, we don't put it in the rover and send it to Mars, we spend it here on Earth. The, the money, money, two and a half billion dollars, we don't put, put it in the rover and send it to Mars, we spend it here on Earth. And Charles mentioned at the beginning that this whole enterprise, if you divide it by every woman, child, man in this country, comes out to be the cost of the movie. I know, I speak on behalf of all my colleagues in science, that's a movie I want to see. Comes, comes out, out to be, be the cost of the movie. movie. I know, I, know, I, I speak, speak on behalf of, of all my colleagues in science, science. That's, that's a movie, a movie I want to see. see. So, thank you all. Um, Adam, uh, tell us about the landing. <laughs> All right, Greg. Um, 
I can't tell you too much about it. I can't tell you too much about it. I mean, it looks good. Uh, I'm being a little flip. I mean, it looks good. I'm being a little flip. In short, it looked extremely clean. Uh, we had, uh, yeah, we had, uh, we had, we touched down in conditions that were um, on the more benign side of our nominal expectation. Our, um, the, by, by the way, I want to preface everything. This is preliminary data scooped with the sieve in the cacophony of the, in the cacophony of the control room during the celebration, right? And largely by my good friend Miguel San Martin, who's somewhere out there. Good, good friend, friend Miguel, Miguel San Martin, who's somewhere, somewhere out there. I hope. At any rate, um, very nominal, uh, remarkably good. Uh, um, our navigation error was uh, was was, was, uh, was on the low side of our expectation, which meant that we probably had a good alignment between the celestial center sensors and the inertial, uh, inertial sensors, the IMU. Um, our powered flight appears to have been excellent. If my good friend Ben Toma is in the house, is Ben in the house? If, if my, my good, good, good friend, friend Ben, ben Toma, Toma is in the house, house is Ben in the house? So uh, it looked good, in short, good and clean. And, and it looks, at least by my eyeball, that we uh, landed in a nice, flat spot. Beautiful. <laughs> really beautiful. What, I, I have to ask you, what kind of file type, can you tell us about the image file type and compression that was used to send this very important uh, couple of thumbnails back from Mars? Yes, unfortunately, I absolutely cannot. <laughs> yes, yes, unfortunately, I absolutely I cannot. cannot. <laughs> <laughs> if Justin Mackey is in the room, or there's a couple other people on the team who'd be able to whip that out quickly, but I, I don't, couldn't tell you. Sorry. <laughs> if, if Justin, Justin Mackey is in the room, room or there's a couple other people on the team who'd be able to whip that out quickly, but I, I don't, couldn't tell you. Sorry. Are you going to call your daughter Curiosity? <laughs> <laughs> okay. A serious question. A little more than 48 hours ago, you told me you would tell me a secret. Once curiosity landed. Can I have my secret? Yeah, what was this? A lot has happened in the last 48 hours. And to be very truthful, I do not recall what that secret was. And to be very truthful, I do not recall what that secret was. For the landing that go down to something like five decimal points. Um, I just wanted to confirm with you that, that, those, those, that you do have them, have those sort of coordinates. And am I reading those coordinates correctly when I see that it looks as though you've landed within 500 meters of the uh, skirt around the mountain? That, I mean, you're really very close to the mountain at the closer end in the landing ellipse and possibly within striking distance of the phyllosilicate trench. I, can, I can't confirm that. I, can, I, can, I, can't I can't confirm, confirm that. that. Um, my estimate, I'm looking for somebody. Yes, there's somebody in the audience here who has that in the tip of their noggin. Um, 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 my estimate, I'm looking for somebody. Yes, 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 yes. there's somebody in the audience here who has that in the tip of their noggin. <laughs> looking at the picture, uh, and trying to figure out from there where we are. I would imagine by tomorrow, tomorrow's press conferences, they should have a better idea where, where it came down within a few hundred meters at least, hopefully. Okay, the next question's over on this side. Was when Adam asked for OD 278, and they said, no, we only have 277. What was happening, or was it anything of significance? N no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Thank you.
So that rocked. Seriously, did, was that not cool or what? <laughs> Woo! Woo! This beautiful theater of tonight, the drama of us all being able to experience it together. Soup to nuts. Soup to nuts. I can't tell you too much about it. I mean, it looks good. Uh, I'm being a little flip. Uh, yeah, in the cacophony of the... Uh, was, uh, was... Yes, unfortunately, I absolutely cannot. <laughs> I, can, I can't confirm that. And to be very truthful, I do not recall what that secret was. Good friend Miguel San Martin, who's somewhere out there. N no. <laughs> if my good friend Ben Toma is in the house, is Ben in the house? <laughs> if Justin Mackey is in the room, or there's a couple other people on the team who'd be able to whip that out quickly, but I, I don't, couldn't tell you. Sorry. Um, my estimate, I'm looking for somebody. Yes, there's somebody in the audience here who has that in the tip of their noggin. The money, two and a half billion dollars, we don't put it in the rover and send it to Mars, we spend it here on Earth. Comes out to be the cost of the movie. I know, I speak on behalf of all my colleagues in science, that's a movie I want to see. <laughs>
A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So. And I looked at it as much as I could. It is round. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. And I looked at it as much as I could. It is round. It's like pear-shaped. Look, this is not settled science. There are still questions. You can find a scientific paper that says practically anything. That's what we have with climate change as induced by human conduct. And as storms kick in, as water levels rise, the more... I worry that we might not be able to recover. You're not a climate scientist. F you. I sometimes think to myself, look, there are a lot of questions still about Einstein's theories. You, you don't ask, is the science right? You ask, should we have carbon credits? We, when, when, you know, when, when we fall ill, we go to the local witch doctor. What? The local witch doctor. <laughs> does it help the homeless person in the street? No. Does it, does it help your show? No. So you would say, this is a moment to listen to climate science. Scientists don't know anything about anything. People realize there's something very strange about this issue that, you know, when it's snowing, it's due to global warming. When it's raining, it's due to global warming. When there's drought, it's due to global They know th there's something uh, unscientific about that. We know that five million people already die each year from causes related to climate change. Uh, you know, the whole thing is sufficiently insane. You know, we build our cities on the basis of science. That is simply irresponsible. Some people are duking it out, but what are they fighting over? Earth is flat. You stand by that? Exactly. We can benefit from knowing about it. A general decline in science uh, and engineering and a decline of the kind of sexiness of science. <laughs> sexiness of science. F you. We went to the moon and people knew science and technology fed those discoveries. All of that science, none of it is settled in the sense. Well, so you know it is settled. You know it is settled. None of it is settled in the sense. Well, so you know it is settled. You know it is settled. None of it is settled. None of it is settled. None of it is settled. <laughs> You can create the entire universe out of nothing. Okay, so, and the press, which I count you as part of. <laughs> like there's a hurricane there, we don't know. Should I stay, should I go? What I'd rather happen, you stay and you die, okay? You stay and you die, okay? These kind of attitudes seems distasteful, even immoral. <laughs> On that sobering note, Neil deGrasse Tyson, always a pleasure. Been dazed and confused for so long, it's not true.